Boy, what a year it has been, huh? I don't know how it was for you, but I can say I had no idea what to expect and I ended up completely somewhere unexpected. And so, I want to celebrate with you uh, my, uh, yeah, last decade on YouTube. Uh, I had no idea that when I... Uh, you know, started this year that this was going to be the last year that I posted videos on this channel and that, uh, yeah, I'd be moving on to other projects. I had a loose idea that I wanted to start something new in the next year, but I had no idea what it was exactly. So I had an inkling, but I had no idea that, well, what direction I was going or where I was headed. And, you know, um, I want to start out by first of all just answering why. Why am I st not posting on this channel anymore and why am I moving on to a new project? Well first of all uh, there's a general thing to be said about you know my channel and how I've approached my channel over the years. I've always aspired to be a broad person to cover a wide range of topics. I've never wanted to fit myself into one specific personality type niche. I never wanted to be an INFJ YouTuber making INFJ videos or an INFP YouTuber making INFP videos. I wanted to be broad to cover psychology and personal growth and I wanted to do so in a wider perspective and uh, while that helped me build my channel and got me to quite a high amount of subscribers I mean I am still one of the biggest MBTI youtubers out there uh, overall I ended up uh, with the problem that you know no matter uh, what topic I'd cover, I'd only get maybe 5% of my audience with me and, uh, you know, if I would go in one direction, 5% of my audience would be happy and if I go in the other direction, another 5% of my audience would be happy and watch, you know. So I had a very high, <laughs> I had a very big struggle, uh, you know, growing and expanding my channel past a certain amount of viewers, you know. Since the past three years, my channel has not been growing. It's stayed stagnant more or less and I've tried different directions only to find out that you know no matter where I went you know I could not really uh, break out of my niche in a sense so uh, the community had grown very tribalistic we you know we had so many different camps all with different opinions and different de definitions and that also made it a lot harder to grow because uh, which camp was I supposed to align myself with was I supposed to be and uh, fulfill and live exactly the way objective personality saw the world was I supposed to go in the direction of cognitive personality theory I've tried to bra to collaborate with and talk with and create like an open vibe where you could reach into different topics and different styles and different youtubers but it was very hard to connect with any of the other youtubers because ultimately everyone had like wanted to maintain control of their own definitions and their own work and they wanted you know to of course enforce their own artistic vision and uh, idea for the MBTI on the world so ultimately it was very hard to collaborate with people because people want to of course keep things the way they want and they don't want to let anyone else in and they don't want to adjust their opinions and definitions to another person's opinions and so on so the MBTI community tends to cluster around uh, different gurus and people experts all with their own personal opinion uh, that they've developed them by themselves that is generally you know ultimately their 100% own decision you know uh, and um in the scope of that, you know, as a viewer, I don't know how it is for you, to how to relate to that and how you connect to it, but what I often find is that we are very protective of our own experts, you know, if we have somebody that we look up to and like and appreciate, of course, we can be very defensive about how, uh, yeah, their work is treated and how it's approached, and when I was starting to make videos to explore and learn about other systems and other models, like when I started trying to understand objective personality or when I started trying to understand cognitive personality theory or so on, uh, of course, naturally, like a lot of people would be very afraid that I would be too hard on their uh, person that they looked up to. And of course, you wanted to protect the people you cared about and you wanted to stand up for them and make sure that their work was treated fairly. 
So uh, it was a difficult process to know how to navigate that because of course I was curious and I was paying attention to these systems and I picked the systems that I was genuinely curious about which I thought had some potential and some you know, interesting new ideas and I wanted to know about and understand them better. Uh, but I also of course wanted to give my own opinion and fair thoughts about it. Uh, and I couldn't really do so without upsetting some people. So as I found myself, you know, uh, bridging and broadening my channel to cover and be a multi-system channel, uh, it also highly limited my growth as a YouTuber mo even more. Because what ended up happening then, of course, was that, you know, uh, the audience and the community would, of course, be happy that I was covering their material, but they wanted it to be covered the way that their person or leader would cover that topic. And, you know, in that sense, why should they watch my channel? Why not just go and watch the original person's or unique personal take on it, right? So ultimately, that also made it very hard for me to keep growing and learning. But throughout the entire process, I did learn a lot. So... I did figure out and understand a lot and there's something that happens you know because if you stick to one system and one approach and one set of definitions and one way of looking at MBTI that's all fair and good you know like of course you can do that but what happens when you start understanding multiple systems and you start learning that hey yeah from this point of view it looks like this and from this, this point of view it looks like that is you end up seeing the bigger picture right you end up seeing oh yeah so this topic human psychology can be understood from multiple perspectives. The MBTI, Carl Jung's own opinions, cognitive personality's view, objective personality's view, and all the different views, all looking at the same thing from a different angle, trying to focus on a different part of the brain, perhaps certain aspects of personality or different aspects of how we think and how we look at and how we see the world. And ultimately, you know, everyone can benefit from understanding these things. You know, I can totally understand that no matter what camp you're in, if you come from the topic of the MBTI or if you come from the topic of cognitive personality theory, I can see that a lot of people are helped by and feel ultimately very happy to learn about these kind of ideas and benefit from it in the sense that they come to a greater understanding about themselves and that they feel more clarity on who they are and that they feel more secure about what they want to do with their lives. But there's also an aspect of time here to be said. And I think that a lot of people will probably agree with me that, you know, when you start out discovering the MTI, when you're completely new to it, you know, uh, you're absolutely obsessed with the categories and definitions, right? And you want to fit yourself 100% to like one personality type. And you want to 100% fit in with that category. You want to be the most INFJ, INFJ in the world, right? So you want to do this because it makes you feel like you belong somewhere. People say the goal of the MBTI is to finally feel understood, right? To finally feel like you fit in somewhere, that you have friends and people around who you can connect with. And of course, that's a great and beautiful experience and it's a good experience. But something happens over time. What I notice with most people is the same thing for most people. You know, past the two-year mark or something like that, people start feeling like, yeah... You know, I don't really want to compromise too much to fit in. Like, of course, while it's nice to feel understood and to fit in somewhere, I don't really want to compromise my unique qualities and characteristics to fit in with this personality type. And I kind of, like, while I appreciate many of the traits of this personality type and while I think many of these things are good things, I don't want to just be this personality type anymore, right? I want to be, and I want to grow as a person, and I want to learn something new, and I want to understand something better, right? So... What do you do when that happens? Well, how do you approach that? You know, how do you keep growing, keep learning? Because if you try too hard to fit yourself with the category, right? What ends up happening is you become fixed in a certain frame of mind and a certain way of looking at the world. And you feel you can easily start after a while to feel stuck in that frame because yeah, okay. Now what, you know? What do I do now, you know? And I feel and I've said this many times that the, the typology community doesn't really know why they study typology. Of course, you want to know about your personality type. That's one of the goals. And you want to know and get to know the cognitive functions and how they work, right? That's one of the other goals that people tend to talk a lot about. And of course, you want to learn how to type other people, right? But why? Why do we want to do these things? Why do we want to know about personality types? Why do we want to study cognitive functions? Why do we want to type other people? Well, ultimately, I think we've forgotten and started confusing the means with the end. Because the end, right, is to understand yourself fully. Not to understand the personality type that you have, but to understand yourself, right? So you want to 
get to a higher state of awareness and self-awareness of who you are, what you want out of life, and what kind of a unique person you are in life, and what your unique values and opinions and beliefs and thought processes are. Because even if you are an INFJ or an INFP, ultimately you know that you have your own unique things that make you a special person because of your unique experiences throughout life, your upbringing, your family, your friends, and what you've learned over the years, and all the effort that you put into improving yourself, you know. You want to feel like you are and have become self-actualized and individuated. So you want to feel like you've become your best version of yourself and that you're living your best possible life. Besides that, you don't really want to know about the cognitive functions, right? Sure, it's interesting to know and it's an interesting frame of reference to study and to think about, hey, oh, introverted intuition, do I do that? Do I have this? And how much do I have this? But uh, the goal is not to understand the right definition of each function, but to understand, you know, uh, to learn how you think. How does my mind work? Why do I get anxious in these situations? Why do I think this way? And, uh, and how do I approach the world this way? And why do I have this mindset? And why do I make these kind of decisions? And why do I end up in these kind of thoughts frames? And if you know these things, of course, the goal is that you can transcend yourself, right? So you can start rewriting your brain. You can start saying, hey, instead of making these kind of decisions, or instead of doing this, I could change my environment or my lifestyle or I can come up with some systems or methods so that I can think differently and think better and think smarter, solve decisions faster, you know, get out of, uh, you know, stagnation more easily, get myself more energized if I feel bored or drained or tired, you know. You want to know how you work so that you can give yourself what you need so that you can thrive and be happy and healthy as a person. So... These are the true goals, right? So the goals are, you know, happiness, flow, transcendence, self-actualization, to integrate, you know, to learn from all the types, to learn about different ways of looking at the world and to learn that every person has their own unique wisdom. And if you understand how other people think, you can take on their perspectives and opinions and ideas in your life and implement them in a way that feels authentic and right for you. So we can grow together by studying with other people and learning about other people, right? So uh, I say this because sometimes people get too type obsessed, you know, too obsessed with their own type, too obsessed with their own way of seeing the world, and too antagonistic towards other ways of seeing other people. We get antagonistic about sensors or extroverts or people that we feel are stupid, wrong, or something like that, when in reality, you know, Everything, every person in the world has evolved for a specific purpose and a reason, right? So, uh, and even if uh, their way is different from you, their way works for them, right? And why does it work for them? And how does it work? And how could you benefit from trying to learn from these people? Because instead of just researching your own type, perhaps you want to research all the types and you want to learn from all the types and how all the types think so that you can, yeah, learn more about yourself. The goal is not to, you know, know how to type everyone in your environment so you know who you can hang out with and who you want to cut out of your life, you know. The goal is to learn how everyone thinks so that you can connect more easily with everyone and so that you can learn and understand other people better. And ultimately from that you'll learn more about yourself too. I say these things because I want to, you know, make it clear about, you know, where I'm headed personally. So like I said, I'm starting fresh. I'm starting a new channel. And uh, the goal of that channel is not to discuss types. It's, I don't want to get stuck in a type niche anymore. I don't want to get stuck in, you know, making videos about specific personality types or uh, getting too obsessed about cognitive function definitions and things like that. I want to make videos about personal growth, flow, self-actualization and transcendence. And to give those videos a chance to truly become what they deserve to be, I'm taking a month off to plan, prepare and improve my visuals, my audio, my uh, delivery, my storytelling and everything so that I can have a clear direction and purpose for what I want my channel to really be. And if you want to help me out with that or if you want to support me, you can always check out patreon.com slash ericdor and become a patron. You can always message me if you have ideas for topics you think I should be covering. If you have ideas, you can also let them know, uh, write them down below in the comments. You know, I've learned so much from all of you and I've learned so much from being on YouTube. So I only look back at the years here with gratitude towards all of you because you've been a wonderful audience. And 
you helped me grow so much. You, I don't want to say that what I posted on my old channel was bad or that it was wrong or it was unhelpful or anything like that. Because I know it was helpful. I know that so many people commented and were so appreciative of my videos. And I know so many people say they learned so much. And I met many of you in real life. And I've seen how you see and look at how you like made a positive difference in your life through my videos and through my coaching. So I'm very happy for that. And I'm very, I, I really appreciate all of you for everything that you taught me as well because uh, through this you know most of the videos I made I made because somebody asked a question or somebody messaged me or somebody told me something interesting and made me think and you know made me want to talk and research and learn a little bit more about that. I consider this channel kind of a trial phase it was me talking and learning as I went and growing and understanding more and more and every video is a learning experience for me. It's taught me more about myself, it's taught me more about how I think, and it's helped me, you know, put my thoughts out there so that I can criticize myself and see my problems, my leaps in judgment, so that I can think smarter <laughs> and better in the future. And so I think that many of you will still find and relate to my channel in the future and the past as well. <laughs> so if you check out my old videos, you'll probably still relate and find some connection and find, hey, I thought that about that too, and I've considered this perspective too, and I'll also kind of those ideas. But I do always say, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt. I'm not uh, uh, the person who knows everything, and I don't think any of us YouTubers or MBTI YouTubers are. None of us should be treated as 100% uh, scientific uh, truth. Uh, we should all be criticized and scrutinized and looked at from a personal perspective. And ultimately, if an adv uh, advice you get doesn't make you happier, doesn't improve your life, it's not good advice. So you got to find the things that fit for you and the things that you relate to and resonate with and the things that make you happier and healthier as a person. And, you know, emphasize your own personal judgment, right? I can't wait to start my new channel and once again thank you all so much for this time and for all these years on YouTube. I started my channel in 2007 right and I started making type videos I think around 2011 or something so it's more than 10 years of type videos and videos on psychology and philosophy and it's been a blast and I continue to enjoy every minute of it. Thank you once again and have a wonderful 2023.